In this session, we're going to build out the majority of the corridor model here for the eastern approach of our intersection. This will be slightly more challenging because of the location of the crown. Let me show you what I mean. If I zoom in on the western approach, remember we placed the crown here along the alignment because the alignment represented the dividing line between the forward and reverse lanes. I'd like to do the same thing for the eastern approach, except in this case the alignment doesn't fall at that location. The dividing line is right here along the left edge of the left turn lane. To create this lane, I'm going to use the lane from tapered median subassembly part. This is one that we used in an earlier session. Let's keep that in mind. I'm going to create an assembly and I'll call this secondary street crown right. For the assembly type, I'll choose undivided crown road and I'll click OK. I will then click to place this on screen. Let's zoom out and we'll pan this up. Next, we'll add some lanes. I'll select the assembly and I'll click tool palette. I am going to choose lane from tapered median. The lane that I place now is going to represent this turn lane to the right side of my alignment. I, however, am going to place it on the left side of the assembly. Let me go to the Properties palette for a second. We'll pull this down. We'll make sure that it's looking at the left side. I will then zoom in and click to place the lane. I'll press Escape when finished. Let's zoom out. So if this lane represents the lane right here, I need two more lanes to the left of this one. I'm going to choose Lane Super Elevation AOR. And I will snap two more lanes here to the outside. I'll press Escape when finished. Now we'll adjust some of their properties. I'm going to select these by species. I'll grab the Super Elevation AOR lanes first, and then we'll adjust their pavement thicknesses. For pave 1 depth, that'll be 0.125, pave 2, 0.125, base depth, 0.5, sub base, 0.333. We are not going to be using the pivot point, so let me drag that down. We'll turn that off. I'll press Escape. I will then select this lane from tapered median. We'll pull down and we'll use the same pavement thicknesses, pave 1, 0 0.125, 0 0.125, 0 0.5, 0 0.333. These three lanes represent lanes that are all traveling in the same direction. The right side of this lane represents the crown of my road. I want that to fall along here. Remember that the lane from tapered median allows for two targets, one for the inside and one for the outside. I'm going to take the inside target of this lane and I'm going to tell it to follow my alignment. I will then tell the outside of this lane to follow this polyline that represents the edge of that left turn lane. This will force this lane in its entirety to be drawn on the right side of the alignment while still being thought of as a left lane. Knowing that, I need to create these last two lanes. Creating these may also look a little unusual. Let me zoom in. I'm going to select Lane Super Elevation AOR, and I'm going to click to place this on the left side of the assembly. I'll press Escape. I will then select that lane. I'm going to come up and choose Mirror, and I'll mirror it to that same marker. And it says, do you want to mirror the subassembly to the same side? Yes. Let me click OK. I'll tell you why in just a second. Let me press Escape. Don't forget I still have the original lane here. Let me select that and I'll press delete. What I did here, this lane is considered part of this group. Had I just placed this lane to the right side of the assembly, it would have been considered part of the right side group. And as this lane pulled over, they would actually cross here. By making this lane part of the left side group, when this lane pulls over, this lane's part of the same group, they're all gonna go together. Let's add one more lane. I'll snap this to the outside. I will then select these lanes, 0 0.125, 0 0.125, 0 0.5, 0 0.333. Let's turn off the pivot. Just for a second, I'm going to select the assembly, and I'll go to Assembly Properties. We'll go to the Construction tab. Here you can see that the entire assembly is built on one side. Since our crown does not fall at the assembly insertion, this guarantees that as things shift to the right, everything's going to move like it should. I'm going to close this. Next, we'll assign our properties. I'm going to select this lane. This one's going to represent a right lane inside. This one will be a right lane outside. It is also going to have a slope of negative 3%. These next two are right here. These are going to be left lane inside. And when we say right and left, we mean just right and left of the crown. Now it's not going to let me set the properties because they're different species. Let me do this one at a time. 
I'll select lane from tapered median. We'll make this left inside lane. This one will be a left inside lane. And this one will be a left outside lane. Let's also adjust the default slope. Finally, we'll give these logical names. This lane is going to be right lane number one. This is the through lane. This one is going to be right turn lane outside. It's a turn lane on the right side of the crown to the outside. This one is going to be left turn lane inside. This one will be the through lane, left lane number one. And then this one will be left turn lane outside. When I'm finished, I'll press escape. Now that we have our assembly built, let's try and sweep this along the alignment. I'm going to create a new corridor for the east approach. I'll call this secondary street east approach. I'll be using the secondary street alignment, the secondary street finished grade profile, and I'll be using the secondary street crown right assembly. Won't be targeting any surfaces. I am going to be setting the baseline and region parameters, so I'll leave that selected and I'll click OK. For this region, I'm going to click the select point for my start station, and we are going to start this corridor at the end point of this farthest curb return. I will run this to the end of the alignment. Let's set some targets. Right here, left turn lane inside has two targets. For the lane width, I am going to select an alignment. I'll be choosing the secondary street alignment that will match the left edge of that lane to the alignment. And then for the median edge, I'm going to have this follow some geometry in the file. I'll select that from the drawing and I'll select this polyline. I'll press enter. That's good enough for right now. Let's click OK. I'll click OK. Let's go to frequency. When it comes to the frequency insertions along offset targets, I'm not going to utilize the extra insertions. I'll add more of these if they're necessary. I'll click OK and I'll click OK. Let's rebuild. Let's take a look at this in the section editor. I'll select the corridor. I'll go to section editor. Here we can see the location of our alignment. Here we can see the lane from tapered median. The right side is targeting that polyline. The left side is targeting our alignment, which forces that entire lane to the right. That puts the crown exactly where I want it. And as I step through, we can see this pretty much stays the same all the way to the end of the corridor. Let's close this. We'll make a couple more changes. I need curb and gutter on either side. Let's zoom in and I'm going to right click on the tool palette name. I'll go to F dot subassemblies, curb and gutter tab. I'll choose type F curb and I'll snap one of these to the outside in both cases. I will then select the corridor and we'll rebuild. Perfect. Next we'll take care of our targeting to the outside. We're going to do the same thing we did on the western approach. I want these outside lanes to target the returns or the edge of traveled way, whichever one is farthest. To edit the targets, I'm going to come up and use the shortcut. I'll click my region. For the left turn lane on the outside, we'll set a horizontal target. It's going to be based on an alignment. We'll use the northeast return or the secondary street edge of traveled way left, whichever one is farthest. Next, we'll take care of the right turn lane outside. That is going to follow the southeast return or the secondary street edge of traveled way right, whichever one is farthest. Let's click OK and OK. That looks perfect. Same as before, we've got an issue down here at the end. Let's create a derivative of our assembly. I'll press escape a couple times to get out of the command. I'll launch the copy command and we'll select the assembly. I'll copy this up. And based on the direction, looks like the lanes here on the left are perfect. I don't need the lanes to the right or this curb and gutter to the right. So in my copy, we'll take those out. Let's rename the assembly. I'm practicing good form. We'll call this secondary street crown right left side only. Let's split the corridor. I'll select it. We'll use the shortcut icon. I'll choose my region. I'd like to split this at the end of the curb return. 
I'll press escape. Let's open the modify region panel and I'll choose region properties. I'll select my new region. We'll change the assembly to 2nd Street crown right left side only. Then we'll take care of the targets. I'll click the target ellipsis button. Looks like the lane from tapered median held its targets. I do have some unnecessary targets here on left lane 1. I'm going to click in the horizontal target field and I'm going to clear these out. I'll click OK. I will then go to left turn lane outside. That's where I need the targets. I want this to follow the northeast return or the second street edge of traveled way left, whichever one is farthest. When I'm finished, I'll click OK and then OK. I'll click OK. That looks perfect. I'll press escape and we'll back up. And then I'll regen to deselect the corridor. Now that we have our approaches taken care of, in our next session we'll go into the alignment properties and add super elevation. We'll use that to flatten out these lane slopes as they approach the intersection.